Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you, I want to say midway through the international break, but we're not quite there yet, we've still got a little bit of time to go, but we're edging closer to a return to the Premier League, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or bad thing, judging by Arsenal's game against Aston Villa just before the break, um, but anyway, before we get there and to cut through the mundaneness and the let's face it dull international break um, I'll try and do I, I said I was going to do one of my Q&A's loads of you replied to my Twitter message and uh, I'm going to now try and work my way through all your questions and your opinions and uh, do my best to answer what you have had to say about Arsenal I'm going to do this in a few parts because there's so many as always with this and if I did it in one it'd just be one really really long video which I'm sure would bore the hell out of everyone so I'm going to split it up into a few parts and put it out sort of uh, on each day to make it a little bit more watchable and uh, bearable for you guys before I get into it just a quick usual thank you very much um, for your support on this channel and if you are new to it like I said I am the Arsenal correspondent at goal you'll find all my videos below what I do on this channel I'm also on Twitter which is at Charles underscore Watts I'm on Facebook as well and I do my best to keep you updated on all things Arsenal so please do hit that subscribe button right let's get started shall we like I said lots to get through today uh, so here is part one of the Q&A and we'll start with a question from Gunnerman102 who says do you have any idea if Arteta speaks to Orba to find out how the players are feeling about tactics formations? Are players' ideas considered at all because sometimes sometimes they don't look happy even before the game starts? Uh, well, Arteta very much does speak to Aubameyang. They speak uh, regularly, uh, one on one, um, in terms of you know the whole manager uh, captain capacity. Aubameyang sort of revealed that himself about. Um, during his contract negotiations, how important his chats with Mikel were, the one-on-one -on -one chats via Zoom during lockdown, that sort of thing. They've got a really very, they have got a very good relationship. There's a big part of the reason why Aubameyang stayed was because of his relationship with Mikel and how they speak to each other on a personal level. So they absolutely do speak, and our, you know, Aubameyang will be relaying how the squad are feeling to the manager. That's the captain's job, and the manager will do his best to relay how he's feeling to Orba, and that in turn gets passed through to the rest of the players, which is Aubameyang's job as captain. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, Arteta will certainly consider the players' opinions. I think he's a very approachable man. Uh, he likes to be close with his team, and so he'll certainly consider their opinions. But at the end of the day, he is a manager, so it's his decision is final. But he certainly will uh, consider them. And as to whether they don't look happy before the game starts, I think that's more to do with the players. because, um, And to be honest, I haven't really noticed that myself. Um, so, yeah, I can't really say anything more about that because I haven't really noticed if they look happy or not before the game starts. The Arsenal Supporters Club says, why do you think there is a reluctance to play the Haling kids in the first team on block? GG, George Graham had the same dilemma and was forced to play the youngsters in the league. Will Mikel do the same? I'm not sure he's reluctant to play the kids. Um, you sort of look at the numbers of academy products that Arsenal have in and around the first team at the moment. It's a lot. There's not many teams in the Premier League that, that can match that. So I don't think he's reluctant. He certainly does seem to rely on experience as well. I think we probably wanted to have seen a little bit more of maybe Reese, certainly Emil, but Emil's injuries haven't helped him. Um, Balogun as well, but he's got the whole contract situation with Balogun that might be affecting that. But I think you're certainly seeing a fair few of the, the youngsters playing, so I don't think he's overly reluctant. I think the one who I'm a little bit disappointed at the moment is Joe Willock. I think there's not much more Joe can do to get a bit of a go in the Premier League at the moment. Whenever he plays in the Europa League, he's playing very well, he's scoring goals, he's providing Arsenal with a sort of threat from midfield, which they lack in, in the Premier League at the moment, certainly in the central areas. He arrives late in the box, he drags defenders out of position, he just gives Arsenal something a little bit different, something that they haven't really got. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that one, that Mikel had, doesn't seem to have given him a chance in the Premier League, because I'm not sure what um, Joe can do more, really. And I thought it was pretty poor of Mikel not to even include him in the squad against Villa, considering how well he played against Mulder. It kind of, where's the reward there? If you play that well, score a goal, man of the match, and then you don't even make the 18 for the Premier League squad a few days later, it's kind of, I bet that's a bit of a soul destroyer for Joe. Um, it doesn't kind of don't feel like there's a reward for a good performance, and that's a bit of an issue. So I was a little bit disappointed with that one. But on a whole, I do. I'm, I wouldn't say Mikel is reluctant to play the kids from Helen. I just think as a manager, you know, most of them do tend to err on the side of experience um, when they need to. But I think I think um, Arsenal fans can be pretty happy with the amount of kids from the academy that are getting regular game time at the moment in all competitions. Maybe not so much the Premier League. Um, 
Connor asks, hey Charles, Charles, enjoy your work. I've been watching football since the restart. Are there any Arsenal documentaries, books, movies you would recommend to a new fan? I watched 89 a few weeks ago and it was great. Thank you. Come on, you gunners from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Atlanta, Georgia. That was a, certainly um, a place which has been in the headlines in recent weeks, thanks to the US election and obviously Augusta starting this weekend. Can't wait for that to take away the uh, mundane in the international break. Four days of the Masters get my money on later uh in terms of your questions books documentaries i mean the rocky and righty documentary you've got to dig that out if you haven't seen it yet um obviously about david rocastle and right uh, just fantastic documentary makes you laugh makes you cry uh absolutely must watch in terms of books obviously wenger's books come out at the moment i'm a bit disappointed with that one i don't really like it i've got to say it leaves you wanting much much more i don't think he covered anything near what he should have done in terms of depth it was all a bit of a skim read for me uh ray parlor's book is fantastic i'd definitely read that some brilliant stories told in the way ray tells them uh stillness and speed dennis Burkamp's book i love i mean he's my favorite player of all time so uh, you know i was hooked from start to finish on that absolutely brilliant and the invincibles book by amy lawrence is fantastic amy fantastic writer we used to be the guardian now at the athletic good friend of mine um and just a brilliant book about a brilliant era for Arsenal. So I thoroughly recommend that one if uh, you uh, haven't read it yet. So they're my recommendations, Connor. Uh, Thomas asks, which players who are free agents would be good signings for next season? Um, also, which players in their final year should we extend? Um, I think the big one, uh, David Alaba is out of contract at Bayern Munich in the summer. Obviously, kind of known for a left-back. been playing centre-back recently certainly under flick and um has been playing very very well there a player who has in the past spoken very admirably admirably of arsenal um whether that's a realistic one i i don't know but uh certainly a very good player i think anyone who's going to get him on a free transfer if that is the case and he doesn't extend with Bayern, which is beginning to look a little bit unlikely um then he'd be one hell of a um a free transfer in terms of who else um who else is out of contract? Um, Julian Draxler is out of contract at PSG, a player who's been linked for Arsenal so many times. Um, not sure now. I mean, a free transfer maybe wouldn't hurt, but uh, can play across the forward line. Maybe an appealing option for someone. Not sure about Arsenal. Memphis to pay as well. It looks like he's probably heading to Barcelona. I think he's out of contract next year. Um, obviously didn't do it at Manchester United been very very good at Leon. it'll be interesting to see where he goes and if it is to Barca how he does Milik at Napoli is another player he's out of contract um, interesting player 26 good age obviously fallen out of favour massively of Napoli due to not agreeing a new deal with them and uh, has finding himself in a bit of a Meza Ozil situation out of, not registered for the squads for them this season so he'll be leaving either in January or on a free transfer in the summer so he's an interesting one um, in terms of players at Arsenal who are out of contract next summer, who would you keep? I wouldn't keep any of them, to be honest. I think it's time they all went. Socrates, uh, Louise, uh, Ozil, obviously, um, all of them. I think it's time for it's time for all of those guys to move on. I don't think any of them I'd be rushing to keep them. Danny Sabahis, obviously, out of contract. He goes back to Real Madrid. I'm not sure. I wouldn't. I'm not sure I'd sign Sabahis in a permanent deal. I think Arsenal will probably spend their money better elsewhere. It'd fit the position better. So, in ter- yeah, in terms of players who are out of contract this summer I, for Arsenal, I wouldn't sign any of them. I'd let them all leave, and that would certainly free up a big chunk of the um, wage bill. Uh, Ira Guna says, "Are we likely to see Saliba feature this season? Unlikely, I think. I think he'll probably. He'll, I think he'll almost certainly head out on loan to Saint Etienne in January. Be very surprised if he doesn't. He's obviously playing for the 23s at the moment. He played last night in the." Um, EFL Trophy against Gillingham, which Arsenal won on penalties. Played with Callum Chambers, in fact, who's making his return from injury. Interesting centre-back partnership. But yeah, I think Saliba will probably... Um, I'm not sure we'll see him in the Premier League before January. Obviously, he can't play in the Europa League. So I would expect he will head out to St Etienne and spend the second half of the season back at his former club on loan. Uh, Mo Orba says, why doesn't why, why doesn't Arteta give Saliba a chance? Just... Um, I, honestly, it's a mystery. The whole Saliba thing, uh, people I've spoken to, no one really knows and I've not been told that. I, I feel there has to be some some more to the situation because everyone I've spoke to about Saliba raving about him when he was in France. I remember speaking to Bakary Sagner, who certainly knows his defenders, and he was really excited about what Saliba was going to do this season. And I, don't, I can't understand the people that I've spoken to who know football, who know about defenders like Sagner, 
get it so wrong in terms of whether he was ready or not. They all thought he was ready to make an impact. Um, and then you look at like, what, what Wesley Fofana has done, set similar age, came from St Etienne, and immediately made his mark at Leicester. Uh, and Saliba was a more highly rated of the two. So it's really surprising. It feels like there is something else going on. Obviously, we know the sad, what sad things happened to Saliba in the summer. He lost his mum soon after joining. That didn't help. Um, Arteta always points to not having a transition season that last season, but he still played a fair few games. So again, I don't really buy that excuse too much. And Arsenal was so desperate for him to link up with him in the summer. They didn't let him play in the... Uh, they couldn't come to an agreement to let him play in the French Cup final, which suggested they certainly had plans for him, even though he missed a lot of football last season. They still, at the end of the season, had very much plans for him to come over in the summer and get ready for this campaign. So I don't really buy the whole transition year thing. It feels to me that something else has gone on, but I don't know, and no one else knows. It certainly hasn't come out anywhere else yet. So uh, I think we'll have to wait and see. But um so yeah, that's it's it's a tough one for me to answer because I just don't know, unfortunately. Uh, when will Gabby return? Mo asks, and also any chance for us to sign Husimawa in January? In terms of Gabriel Martinelli, he'll be back hopefully by the end of the year. He's getting closer and closer. He's doing some stuff on the training pitches now. Not joined him in full team yet, but getting very close. Um, I think over the next few weeks we'll see Gabby uh, again heavily involved in training and hopefully we'll be back by the end of the year, some point in December. Uh, in terms of any chance of us signing Arwar in January, I doubt it just because how expensive it'll be. I'm not sure Arsenal are going to spend big in January. I'd be surprised given the financial situations at football clubs at the moment. I think they're much more much more chance that clubs are going to save their money and go big in the summer if they can. I think January is probably going to be a very quiet window, not just at Arsenal, but everywhere. Um, and also, I'm just not sure Leon would consider selling Arwa. The fact they've sort of fought so hard to keep him this summer, I'd be very surprised if they sell him midway through the season. Um, so I, I doubt it. I think I saw um, uh, Jean-Michel Wallace talking about Depay um, or it might have been Janino talking about Depay going to Barcelona in January and he said that he was, there was no way they were going to let him go in January so I presume the same thing would apply to Arwa so I'd be very surprised if Arsenal make a make a move to get Arwa in January um, just think if they are going to go for him again probably more likely it would be the summer but you never know we'll have to wait and see um, Optimus MDM says please I'm so curious to know what's really behind us or exclusion from the team because Arteta's explanation just doesn't cut it for me. The million dollar pound question, again, we don't know for, for sure. The fact is Arsenal wanted to get Meza Ozil out. They've wanted to get him out for a long time. They've tried. He hasn't bit. He hasn't taken the bait. He stayed. He's always said he wanted to stay and see out his contract. Um, and... I think the I think the bottom line is Arsenal wanted to get him off uh, get him off the wage bill and they couldn't do it and it's sort of got to a point now where it's a case of okay well you're not going but we're not going to use you so it's just as simple as that really um, I know Mikel says it's for footballing reasons and and you know it it possibly is I think he's Erzul well, certainly not the greatest on the training ground it's not, it's an open secret you speak to people around there it's not. He's not someone who puts it in full lid, and that's what Arteta demands of his players. Um, I still think, for me, there's a, you know, Ozil should be in the squad. I think Arsenal are hurting themselves by not having met a player of Mesut Ozil's quality in the squad, but it's a decision they've taken, and we have to move on from it. He's not going to be here much longer. He's going to go in the summer anyway. So let's just get on with it. The decision's been made, and it's not going to be reversed. It can't be reversed till January or February anyway. He can't play again till February. Um, so it's just the way it is. Um, but in terms of exactly why it's gone on, we don't know. Mesut will, Mesut will speak once it's all over. His agent has already said that. And it'll be interesting to hear what Mesut has to say about the situation. Obviously, the pay cut thing in the summer happened. He was playing before that. He hasn't played since. Kind of put two and two together and think that's clearly something... Um, some of this sort of issue behind it. Mikel Arteta was very, very big on getting his players to take the wage cut in the in the summer. Mesut was one, the highest earner, who decided not to. The whole China comments thing, I'm not I'm still not convinced that's the definite reason for it, like a lot of people are. He played a lot of football after those comments. Um so I'm not sure it's that, but we'll have to wait and see. Arteta's had his say. We'll have to wait and see what Mesut Ozil has to say. 
Uh, Peter says, when is Arteta going to realise that William and Laka are too old to play 90 minutes? They are bench players at best. Um, yeah, they're certainly looking like bench players at best at the moment. There's no doubt about that. I think William and Lacazette have been pretty dreadful in recent weeks. Lacazette against Aston Villa was awful and his numbers were just dreadful. 15 touches of the ball, nine passes, only two in the opposition half. Basically, Arsenal playing with 10 men. William was not much better, although he saw a lot more of the ball than Lacazette. Lacquer had Arsenal's best chance of the game, missed it, didn't even hit the target. Similar against Leicester when he missed the sitter, which would have made it 1-0. Away at Liverpool at 2-1, he missed the sitter to make it 2-2. It's costing Arsenal at the moment. He's horribly out of form. And the worrying thing with Lacazette is you don't really see him coming back into form at the moment. He looks a pale shadow of the player he was um, when he won player of the season in 2018, when him and Orba linked up so well that season. Um and yeah, for for me, I think it's time. You can't justify Bamiang playing out on the left wing um, when Lacazette's playing as badly as he is at central striker. I think you have to move Orba back into the central. Now, when you create as few chances as Arsenal do at the moment, the ones that you do create, you've got to take. And when you've got a player who's missing them at the moment, that is going to cost the team big time. You've got a lot more chance of a Bamiang taking them than Lacazette. So I think the time is right now. The international break's come at a good time for Mikel Arteta to really assess what's going on in terms of an attacking Arsenal in an attacking sense. And um, yeah, for me, I would be I'd be moving Lacazette out now. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mikel Arteta certainly has realised that. I think the Aston Villa game would be very surprised if he, if he watches that game back and doesn't think that the time is right for a change. And the same applies for Willian as well. I think Nicolas Pepe is banging on the door. You heard about his uh, comments when he went away with Ivory Coast a couple of days ago, so admitting he's frustrating at not playing. Only had one Premier League start. He scored three goals this season, though, Pepe. And he just gives you that. He's a goal threat. And he also sets goals out. He may frustrate the hell out of you as well during the game give the ball away plenty of times and cut in on his left foot when he should be going on his right but the fact is he does score goals and he does create goals only Aubameyang's created has had more direct goal contributions than Pepe since Pepe arrived in 2018 I think he's got 23 he scored 11 um, scored 11 goals he's set up 12 only Saka's set up more goals than him since he arrived and so you could, for me you've got to get him in the team especially when it's Willian keeping him out at the moment and Willian hasn't done anything since the Fulham game on the opening weekend of the season so I think Arteta is going to realise that now in answer to your question Peter I'll be very surprised if after the international break when Arsenal go to Leeds and the next couple of games after that if he doesn't we don't have a new look to the front three um, if he's still playing the front three that is uh, Orion Pack says why are we going for Arwa instead of Sabozlai and Buendia we have tried to purchase our 50 million it'll probably cost us more than 58 million whereas Sabozlai and Buendia will cost us under 50 million and both both can offer us more than Iowa um but, I mean Arsenal obviously thought differently when it, that's why they went for Iowa instead of him but I, I really like Sabozlai I think he's a fantastic player I think all of Europe's really waking up to how good he is at the moment um, I think he's, he's slightly a different player than um, Arwa, but I'd love them both, I have to say. The, the, the movement, the way they run with the ball. So Bosley's a little bit of a bigger player. He's got a decent build for the Premier League, a bigger stride, fantastic technique. Obviously very right-footed, but can play on his left foot as well. Cuts inside well. Um, as I said, technique's brilliant. Some of the volleys I've seen him hit and the touches he's done. Um, really exciting player. Much, much cheaper than Arwa, I agree. I think it's, someone's going to snap him up. I think it's 25 million euro release clause, so that's about 22 million pounds. Someone's going to snap him up. His agent's already said that Arsenal are one of the clubs in talks with him. Um, Arsenal, you know, very, very keen on him, as are most of the clubs around Europe who are keeping close eye on his progress. I think this summer will be the summer that he moves. Whether it, to be, it will be to Arsenal, I don't know, but I'm sure Arsenal will be certainly in the running and considering it is the sort of player that they need in the type of position I think they're going to really target in the summer. Buendia um, is a player who Arsenal and a lot of teams have looked at. No one has taken the plunge on him this summer, uh, or sorry, last summer, which perhaps was a surprise. Um, I'm not sure his attitude is a lot that um, I don't think a lot of clubs appreciate maybe his attitude but um, he's a very very good player and um, you sort of look at his numbers for Norwich you look at his numbers even in the Premier League when Norwich struggled they are very very good um, it, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes somewhere either in January or, or the summer but I'm, I'm not sure it'll be Arsenal I have to say I think if Arsenal are going to 
make a move and sign some more of the creative players. I think the likes of Arwar and Sabozlai are going to be uh, much uh, higher up on the list than Buendia is. Uh, Steve says we need a Santi Cazorla type player do we have any youngsters in that mould that we could bring through I mean how do you bring a player through like Santi Cazorla he's a once in a generation type player someone who can play that well with his right foot that well with his left foot who can score goals who can create goals can tackle he's just just a fabulous player I love him absolutely love him so I think it's hard to say do we have any youngsters in that mould but Arsenal have certainly got some talented young midfielders coming through in their ranks you look at Miguel Aziz you know big highly rated player um, getting better and better and getting exposed to more sort of senior the higher end of youth football now Charlie Patino is so you know so many People at the club think Charlie could be a really, really big thing. He's progressing well, very young still, but one that is real, you know, everyone at the club has got very high hopes that he's going to go on and have a good future and make it into the first team. Um, Marcelo Flores is having a good season, the young Mexican who's in progressing through the youth ranks still, I think 16, I think. No, he's 17. He signed his pro contract, didn't he? Um, so he's a player that there's a, a lot of the club are sort of pinning their hopes on coming in and doing well. Still, you know, way off the first team. Yeah, I'm not sure he's even played for the 23s. In fact, I think he hasn't played for the 23s. Still at sort of 18s level or under 21s. In the, he might have had appearance in the EFL trophy. Um, and then obviously you've got Emil Smith Rowe as well, who is at the level, who is at the age now to sort of make the breakthrough. But unfortunately with Smith Rowe, it's just those injuries. They keep holding him back. Every time you think he's going to get a bit of a chance, he's got another injury, he misses another game. And that is a bit of a worry with Emil. We just can't seem to stay fit. And at his age now, you need to because your career goes very, very quickly and you do miss the boat if you can't, if you're not around to be picked. And so hopefully Smith Rowe can keep himself fit and get a good go in the Europa League uh, in the next couple of months and have a bit of a have a bit of a sort of give Mikel a little bit of a nudge to see how he gets on. Uh, and Gassem says, is the club planning to offload Sian Kalasnach in January? I would say certainly they are. Yes, if they can get an offer for Siad, they really tried to get him out in the summer. It looked like he was going to go to Leverkusen. It didn't happen because Leverkusen didn't get out the players they needed to. Whether that's a deal that can be re revisited in January, we'll have to wait and see. But Arsenal would certainly would like to get rid of Kalasnach if they can, just as they did in January. But uh, it all depends if they can find a buyer or a club willing to take on his wages. Right, that's it for part one. I'm going to end this one right here. Um, I think up to about sort of 23 minutes now. This is pro probably long enough. Your interest is waning. So I'll cut this one now, but I will come back with another couple of parts to this one. As I said, we'll drop drip feeds in over the next couple of days to try and keep your interest so you're not going to get bored of one big, long video. So stay tuned for part two. But for now, part one at the Q&A. Thank you for watching. I'll speak to you soon.